Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at some of the finer points of creating arrays along a curve. So recently I've been designing this massive flame cannon to go on the front of a Cerberus tank, and it's already up on the Patreon or on Colts if you're interested in getting it, but the bit that's relevant to this video is that while creating this I was making these tubes which have this nice sort of natural curve to them as if they're hanging slightly under their own weight between the supports, and this sort of brings up some questions of what you might choose to do when creating cables like this mostly because they show some flex. So you can see here that they're wider at the bottom and thinner at the top as if they're sort of being compressed as rubber rib tubes often are. But for 3D printing, this can create some issues. If this was the other way round, then having these smaller finer points on the bottom of your print where you're probably gonna need to put supports could be a real issue. So maybe you're not gonna want that and let's have a look at the different ways that we could address this in Blender. So I'm gonna be using Cable Rater for this just cause it's a bit faster, but you can create all of these tubes just using native tools in Blender you do not need any add-ons, Cable Rater just makes life a bit quicker and easier. I have recently done a short on how to create this in Native Blender, there's a link in the description. I'll actually put that video at the end of the video as well, it only lasts a minute, so you can watch it at the end if you want and it will just stop the clickbaitiness of you having to find different links and click on that and so on and so forth. There's also some videos on Cable Rater in the channel, again links in the description, I won't put those at the end because they're a bit longer. So we've got our cubes here and we're going to create our cable. So shift alt and C to activate cable rater, create cable and we're going to click there and click there and we've got our cable. Oh, I should say, if you are doing this and you want your cable directly in the center, if you just hold control when you're clicking, it will automatically perfectly center in that face. So that's quite a nice little tool you've got there. And we can press D to change how taut this is, things like that. That's not hugely important for this. I am gonna up the width for this slightly because it just saves some time. I'm also going to press C to fill the caps just because that would be important if I was doing this for 3D printing. And what that's done here is just fill the caps at the end. The other thing that's worth mentioning is we can change the resolution of this to be more rounded. You can either come to the data properties and do do that here with the resolution or you could just press Q and then go to adjust curve and then scroll up and you'll adjust your resolution there where it's got profile in the bottom. I'm gonna up that to 32 so it's nice and round. And when you turn this to a mesh, there will be some vertices that overlap here. So you will need to sort that out. Now at this point, I want to add in my ribbing for this cable. So control and A and I'm just going to bring in a cylinder. So something over there, let's up this to 64 so it's a bit more round. I'm gonna move that up here and then S and Z to scale that down to somewhere like there. Then control and A, apply the scale and then go into edge mode and let's just select there and there and I'm going to bevel those and make them relatively round. So let's go to something like that. Then it's just a matter of having that selected, click on that, shift alt and C and then add or edit segment. We've got that there. I probably need to scale that down slightly, but I'll do that in a second. So that's D to offset that slightly, about there. And then A to add an array, S to offset that array and then C and scroll up to add to the count. So something like there looks good for my cable. I'm also going to actually just change the thickness of that. So I can Q and adjust curve there if I've got hard ops, or if you've just got cable rate, control alt C, edit cable, and then just S to change the width. So loads of options there, and we've got our cable. In fact, I might make that a little bit wider still. So let's go with there. So as we said, this has got this effect where it deforms along the curve and where the curve has a more extreme angle, it's gonna distort this object. So we've got that there and we can see this distortion where you've got it the correct width here, but it being thinner here. And as we said, that's fairly similar to what you would get for a ribbed cable, but it can cause problems with 3D printing. Here, it'll probably be fine. I just need a support going to each of these points. But here where these supports are gonna to need to be really thin, this could actually damage or when you pull away from the 3D print could cause a problem. Also, it might just not be the look that you're going for. So I'm just gonna grab that, that, and then our cable, shift and D and bring that over here. And we'll have a look at another approach for this. Now, just to make sure this is more all inclusive, I'm just gonna Q, adjust curve and then press X with hard ops to get that to have no thickness to it. Again, you can come over here, do this in geometry and just make sure you've got this depth to zero in the bevel section and that will do the same thing. But effectively at this point, this is just a Bezier curve as normal. So what we're gonna do is make this sort of curve or a different looking ribbed curve that's not gonna have this distortion and it might be what you're looking for instead. So click on there, drag up from the bottom and we're gonna add in some geometry nodes to do this. And this 
is the only way I've seen of doing this at this moment. Just so you know, this is actually going to be added into Cable Rater as a function later. I've just been talking to the creator and he said he's working on it. So hopefully in the future you won't have to do this yourself, but it's good to know that the option's there and you can do it with Vanilla Blender. So let's click New, come to our geometry nodes, and the first thing that I want to do is I want this to have some thickness to it. So let's start by sorting that out. So I'm going to shift A and then curve to mesh, put that in there. And we want a profile curve to add this thickness. I'm just going to shift A and I'm going to bring in a curve circle. Add that there, connect that to our profile and now we've got that and I can change my resolution. It's already at 32 so I'm going to leave that and I can make this thicker or thinner. So let's go to about there at this point. The other thing I'm going to need is my object that's going to be my points along this. So we've got some options here. We could use exactly the same shape that we did before, but we can also do something different. So it depends what you want. Oh, just as an aside, if you want to keep this so that it stays there, even when you click on other objects, just click that pinned. So now you can click on other things. Just remember what you're working on. Otherwise, you're going to find it annoying as you change something and think it's on a different object. So let's move this over to here out the way. And we're going to need to work on this curve. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to join geometry so that we've got our curve here that's got our thickness to it. Oh, we want to click fill caps so that it's got the caps at the end like before. And then we're going to have a different string that's going to come off and do our functions that's going to create our array. So coming along here, we want to resample the curve. Now what that's going to do is change the amount of points on this imaginary curve. So at the moment, we've got a curve that's here flowing along and we've got our handle that was here, here and here. If I go into edit mode, you can see those handles there. So we've only got three points on this curve. But what I want to do is I want to set a lot of points on this curve because this is going to be where our objects get instanced on. So at the moment, this has got a count of 10. So it's saying that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Though as opposed to my awful drawing, they'll be equidistance apart. So we've got that all going on in the background, and now we can change that count up or down. We can also do it by length, so you can do it distance between each of those points as well if you want. Entirely up to you what you want to use. I'm gonna leave that as length just to make it a little bit easier to go up or down in a specific amount. Now we need our object that we're going to put on this and I'm actually going to use a UV sphere. Let's up those to 64 so it's a bit more rounded and then let's move that over here so we can see it. Now, the normal issue with UV spheres is they have this stupid point here where you've got everything joined in the center. And that's not very nice. But in this instance, because we're going to be putting this onto this curve, that bit's going to be internal to this. And effectively, when you Boolean it all together, you're not going to see that point. So it's actually going to make quite a nice shape with what's effectively going to be really well-formed quads. Whereas if I brought in a quad sphere, and uh, we had a look at that, you can see while this whole object is made of quads everywhere, the quads aren't in sort of straight lines. There's a little bit of deformation to them if we compare those two together. Now that's gonna be quite important for this and something I want you to remember later is that we want effectively this axis here, the Z axis, to be flowing along the curve this way. And that's really easy to do, but it's just something to bear in mind. Now that informs our next decision of I want this to be slightly more squashed. Let's just bring this over and see if it's the right sort of thickness that we want. So it's gonna be about that wide. Let's make it a little bit wider, somewhere to about there. And then I'm just gonna S and Z or Z to flatten that to somewhere about there. Control A and apply the scale. Now you can change how this works. You could do this more on the top and the bottom instead of in the middle. So you could go into vertex mode and select this top point and then the bottom point. And then you could go into something like proportional editing, S and Z and then you can scroll that up and have it change in a little bit of a nicer manner. So that's an option as well. I'm going to stick with this being just flattened that way, but entirely up to you. Control and A and scale, so we've got the scale applied. So now we need to bring this object into our geometry node setup so that we can instance this along our curve, which at the moment has got a point every 0.1. That's probably gonna be really tiny. I'm gonna put that up to one, but we'll fiddle with that later. So we've got this sphere. All I'm gonna do is drag my sphere into my geometry nodes. 
So we've now got this object info node with a sphere. What's really cool about this is you could get rid of that sphere and have several different options. And you can just click there and pick which one that you want. Then we're gonna instance this onto this curve. So Shift A, instance on points. Put that in there, drag our curve to our points. And let's make sure we can see this. So I'm gonna drag that to our join geometry and then geometry to instance. And we can see that we've now got that and we can change how many we've got going. And that's quite cool looking. So we're gonna want a lot of these instances. But at this point, it's not flowing along the curve in the way that we said we wanted it to. And we can fix that by fiddling around with the rotation. Now, it's important to know that a curve and any point on a curve has several things going on with it. So let's just pick this point here on the curve, which has got this instance on it. Now at the moment, this instance is just being kept in exactly the same direction as our original, but our curve has a lot of things going on with it. Firstly, it's got a normal that's pointing out in this direction, perpendicular to our line, remembering that the line is going perfectly through the middle and we've added this profile that makes it look wider. The other thing that it's got going on with it is it has got a tangent. And the tangent, instead of being perpendicular to the object, is parallel at the curve where this point is. So in this instance, it'd be going there. So that's the tangent. That's probably mathematically awfully explained, but hopefully that makes sense. So we want this in the direction of the tangent. And if we just shift A and type in tangent, we can get our curve tangent, click that in there, and we're good to go. Now, a problem that's a little bit hidden here is if we can see this has got a dot in it, this does not, which implies being both purple, they're things that are changeable, but this rotation has an X, Y, and Z angle to it. Notice an angle, not a direction, whereas a tangent only has a direction, and they're slightly different things, but we can fix that. If we just drag that out, Euler to vector, and click that there. And we don't want that in rotation, we want that in vector. And then we're gonna plug that into our rotation and everything looks a bit messy. In fact, that's also quite cool, but that's because at the moment it's aligning it along the X direction. And if we remember, we want this in the Z direction because we said that we're gonna have our Z axis being the direction we want it to flow along. So that's how we sort that out. We just change the rotation to be in the Z axis. And then we can change our length however much we want. So now we've got our ribbed cable. Let's just scale this down slightly. Notice I scale it here and then I have to apply the scale for it to work here. And then let's change that radius down slightly of our central curve and then change our resample length to maybe there. So we've now got some very different looking curves or cables. Now it's up to you which one you prefer having a look at these. So we've got one where we've got a distinct gap between it and you've got your ridges there and you've got your ridges deforming. And when we've got this one where they're all created without deformation, and that means that you don't have any problems here with supports. Now, if you think this is getting a little bit too far apart, that's why we have our curved circle in the center. And we can always drag that out to somewhere about there so you can make it a bit wider. Let's change that to 0.75 and see how that looks. That's a bit better. So we can always solve that problem of having this central bit as well. So it's up to you which one you prefer, but there are two options here. This one's also really important if you've got other things in here like connectors and stuff that you don't want to deform. Now, if you do want to do this, this isn't actually gonna create any geometry for these instanced points. So you need to shift A and just type in realize instances, bring that node in here, and then you're gonna have those as real in inverted commas things. So that's how you can do that really easy way it's not actually that complex a node setup so i'll just bring that so you can see it and if you wanted to you could set this up so that you can change everything in your modifier panel here for example you could put the radius of the curved circle in there and then notice that is now there or you could put the length of your resampled curve there and now you can do that all in the modifier panel without changing anything around and you could put this geometry node set up into your asset library so that you can just bring this into an object it will take seconds if you want to know how to do that i've got a video of that in the description so you can see how you can do that as well
So there we go, two different approaches to cables depending on what sort of appearance you want and which one you think looks best. Do let me know which one you do think looks best because I'm kind of interested just from a modeling point of view. There are definitely positives and negatives to both. For example, while this one has this negative of these being hard to support, it does have these more defined ridges between which for 3D printing on a printer which has slightly less resolution might be a real positive because they'll show up more. So I'll just put the short up now that's got how to array along a curve. If you've made it this far, thanks very much. And before that plays, it'd be really appreciated if you'd hit that like button if you found this video useful. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you know when more videos are released. Have a great day, guys. To create an array along a curve in Native Blender, first start with your curve and then create whatever object you want to array along it. So I'm making a rib tube. For any changes you make, make sure you apply the scale and if you're gonna have the objects touching each other, then I'd delete the faces that are gonna be butting up against each other if it's something like a tube. Next, you need to make sure that the origins of both objects are on the same place. I'm gonna use Machine Tools Align feature, but you could do that by moving the cursor and then snapping it to the cursor. Next, add a curve modifier to your object, selecting the curve that you want it to array along. In this instance, I want it going along the z-axis, so I'm going to select z-axis from the drop-down menu to make sure that that's aligning the correct direction. Then add an array modifier, put that to the top of the stack so it is happening above the curve modifier, and then change the direction to whatever axis you've got it going along, in this instance, the z-axis. You can then add to your array count as you want. Alternatively, you can select it to work exactly off the length of the curve in the drop-down menu, select the curve, then you can modify the length of the curve or its angles, and it will keep the correct array count for that length of curve. 